Well, hi to my YouTube subscribers. Uh, first, an apology. This video isn't about travel or visas. It's about how to become a software engineer, or what we used to call a computer programmer. If you're not interested, feel free to skip this video. I won't be offended. But for the rest of you, the job market for software engineers has arguably never been stronger. I had a 35-year career in the industry, and maybe more important, my older son recently made the transition from elementary school teacher to software engineer. So I believe I can offer some useful advice on how to become a software engineer. Now, I do have some experience teaching computer programming at the college level. And one thing I learned is that some people just don't have an aptitude for computer programming. I suggest that before you invest heavily in this, you try a very basic computer programming course, maybe an online course if you can't take a course at a community college, maybe have somebody work with you a little bit to see if you enjoy programming and if you have an aptitude for it. When I was teaching, I found that some people, in spite of giving them a lot of individual help, just never really saw the model, didn't get it, didn't enjoy it. I don't think there's a big point in pushing the river. I think if uh, you don't have an aptitude for this, find something more compatible with your aptitudes and interests. Now, what do computer programmers actually do? Well, computer programming is simply applied logic. So let's say you're writing a program for a vending machine that takes nickels, dimes, quarters, and paper dollars. So your program sees which button the customer presses it finds the price of that item on a list. Let's say the price for the item is 80 cents. Well, while the customer has not yet inserted 80 cents, the machine will continue to accept money. When the sum of accepted money is 80 cents or more, then the selected item is dispensed and an amount is returned to the customer equal to the amount inserted minus 80 cents. That's a very typical programming problem. First, you work out logically how you would solve the problem, working it out on paper first. That's called an algorithm. And then you translate that algorithm into code that the computer can execute. If you like working puzzles, you're gonna love coding. Your working time will go really fast and you'll be getting paid for something that you'll find is a lot of fun to do. Okay. Now, the easiest way to become a computer programmer is to go to college and get a degree in computer science. You'll study things like algorithms, data structures, programming languages, test methodology, and performance measurement, and maybe some specialized fields like artificial intelligence or databases. Do this, finish a college degree like this, and you're going to have a great job. But this video is for people who can't go the college route. Maybe you already have a college degree, maybe even a master's degree in a field like marketing or psychology, and you don't have the time or the money to go back to school. Or maybe you don't have a college degree. You're the target audience for this video. Now, one popular alternative is to go to a coding boot camp. This is often an intensive program lasting several months you'll probably pay in the neighborhood of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a course like this. Be careful about this. Many of these courses will allow you to pay afterwards when you get a job, but you're signing a contract and you're going to be committed in the future to paying some portion of your salary or making regular payments. This is a real contract, so be careful what you're getting into. So my son and I looked carefully at a number of these programs. Some of them are really excellent, but I think for most people who don't already have a strong background in programming, I think these courses move very fast and it might be difficult to keep up if you don't have the background. So you spend a couple of days on HTML, a couple of days on CSS, a week or two learning JavaScript. You'll learn a series of skills uh, you won't learn any of them in great depth, and for some people, this will be okay. But I'd be concerned as a beginner that you might get left behind and you might be wasting your money. 
my son and I took a different approach. Boot camps work for some people. Take a good look at it. Decide for yourself. I'm going to describe another approach. I think the most important thing you can do is first find a mentor. It might be a friend or relative who already has a job in the field, who knows the industry, or it might be a friend who programs for fun, or you can find mentors in computer programming on the internet. You might have to search a little bit. You pay them. I think this is actually well worth it. Well, my son, fortunately, had me and we spent a year together during COVID. So I was able to transfer a lot of my programming and design knowledge to him. And I think this worked very well, but I was not his only mentor. Through a company called Codecademy, he was able to get a mentor. He met with that mentor, I think maybe once a week. The mentor gave him assignments, looked at the work he did, and guided him in his learning. And I think this is a very useful approach if you can find somebody who can do this. Unfortunately, Code Academy discontinued this program. I think it was an excellent program. I think they probably just weren't charging enough to make it profitable. But I think the most important step is to find someone who can guide you along this path. The actual learning itself, I think is so much easier than when I started. The website codecademy.com, for example, has excellent tutorials on basic and advanced topics. It's a tremendous amount of material. The courses vary in quality, but I found them in general to be quite good. The courses can really be a lot of work. I urge you, if you do these courses, to really do all the steps. You know, learning to code is a little bit like learning to play the guitar, that even if you're talented, it takes a lot of practice to get proficient. So go through all the exercises in these Codecademy tutorials. Don't skip steps, work through all the exercises. And I think you'll really learn a lot from these tutorials. I'll post a link to that site in the description of this video. Now on that website, if you go to the tab that says catalog, you'll find subject areas like full stack engineer, back end engineer, iOS developer, front end engineer, computer science, now, your mentor will help you choose which path is best to follow. Front-end engineer is a good starting point, as there are many entry-level jobs in this area. You'll also see subject areas like web development, data science, computer science, web design, cybersecurity, and machine learning. Web development is a good place to start if you're unsure. And you'll find languages like Python, JavaScript, HTML and CSS, SQL, Java, C++. If you're unsure, I'd suggest starting with JavaScript. This is a very rich interpretive language that has properties that make it the standard for web development. Now, the starter courses on Codecademy are free. As you progress, you'll probably want to get their pro package. They often run 50% off specials, so wait for one of those. If you're a motivated self-learner, you can learn what you need to know on Codecademy. They even have courses on interview skills. Now, here's the place in the video where I plug my novel, The Vientiane Affair. There's espionage, history, politics, love, sex, violence, and great characters. I think you'll enjoy the story. And if you're an Audible subscriber, why not use a credit to listen to it? This is a way that you can support independent authors like me. Now, the most important skill you're going to need when you interview is the skill of coding. Most interviews today include coding exercises. You can't fake it. You really need to be able to code during your interview or be able to take a test in coding. So the best way to do this is to get a lot of practice in actually solving programming problems. So I would recommend signing up for CodeWars.com. So CodeWars is a site where people have contributed thousands of problems to solve, and you can solve them in different programming languages. The problems or challenges are at different levels, and you earn uh, points or kata for solving these problems. 
It's a very motivating way to learn. The problems are interesting. And when you solve a problem, you can look at the solutions that other people contributed. And you can learn a lot from seeing what other people did with the problems. There are many different approaches to solving these problems and many different approaches to coding itself. People have different philosophies of coding and you'll be able to compare what you did to what other people did and you might end up changing your style a little bit. Doing these Code Wars challenges will definitely prepare you for the kinds of programming challenges you'll get when you do interviews. Now, if you can do it, I would also recommend taking a course in computer science at your local college. I'd particularly recommend taking courses in data structures and in algorithms. These are really the fundamental courses that you would want. Now, for a person with no prior background, I think it would take six months to a year for a motivated person to reach a level where they're prepared for interviews. Certainly there'd be a lot of variation in that number, but I think that's a reasonable ballpark. I think for most people, actually a three month boot camp might not be enough. I would say six months of serious study, solving coding problems, doing the tutorials on Codecademy, six months to a year, and you'll be ready to interview. So keep in mind that when you interview for these jobs, you are going to be competing with people who are computer science majors. But there are plenty of entry-level jobs, so you can definitely get one. Another way to get started, once you know the fundamentals, is to do websites for people. You don't have to charge too much for it because you're learning, but this is valuable experience. So my son Ben and I worked together on this for about a year. His first job actually was with a friend who has a business in the area of IPTV. And it gave him a chance to work with a really skilled designer. Uh, he went on to a web development job and now he's uh, looking for more advanced full stack work. He enjoys the work and he makes a lot more than he did teaching. So to summarize, to start with, you really need an aptitude for work that involves logic and solving puzzles. You want to find somebody who can mentor you. You want to follow a curriculum of online courses that will really prepare you for the work. You'll want to work through a lot of programming problems or challenges at a site like Code Wars until you're confident that you can do these in an interview situation. Sometimes it'll take quite a few interviews before you'll get a job, but each interview is good preparation for the next interview. Now, the one nice thing about computer programming is that it's all about your skills. Credentials are nice, but ultimately people will hire you for your skills. If you have solid skills, you're going to find work because there is demand for programmers. But having said all this, the best way to prepare yourself would be to get a college degree, maybe a bachelor's degree or master's degree in computer science. Unquestionably, that's the best path. You'll learn a lot of things that will really help you in your work, help you advance, big advantage. But if you can't do that, you can still get a job as a software engineer and you'll work your way up gradually and you will probably pick up many of these skills. So if you want to become a software engineer and you have an aptitude for it, there are plenty of resource materials out there online to be able to do this. Find yourself a mentor. It's absolutely something you can do. I found it a very rewarding and absorbing and creative career. You might find it the same. So if you choose this path, good luck. And if you have questions, feel free to post them. Okay, well, thanks for listening and good luck.